Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of A to Z of Python. Today we're going to be talking about the letter K, and that's going to be quargs oh, and args. So what are quargs and args, if that's what you want to call them? Uh, well, it's the thing that you see in a function, and if you don't know what it is, you, you just think it's some complex thing and you just kind of skip past it. But it looks something like this. If you have someone defines a function and they pass in this like star args and star star quargs and they return like something. This part is what's confusing and the good news is is that it's actually a super basic concept but very very helpful in a lot of situations and what we're going to do is I'm only going to cover three examples so this is going to be a short video but um, all you need to know is how it works and the actual applications are up to you. You can find ways to sneak this into your code. So let's start actually with uh, just the arguments, not the, the keyword arguments, which is the quargs. So we're going to do a function or define one called math. We're going to pass it args. Now, the real magic here is the star, okay? That's what makes this different parameter than, than anything else. And what this does is it tells uh, Python to accept any number of, of parameters and put them in a list. And so let's see what that looks like. So I'm gonna actually print args first, and I'm gonna pass it in a bunch of stuff. So we can literally send it as many or as few arguments as we want. I'm just going to pass in, eh, let's pass in five. And then let's go ahead and run this. And what it's spitting out here when it prints is showing that it's kind of taken this and it's grouped them all together into an object. And that's really cool. So what we can do is iterate over that. So we're going to do for i and args and do print. Let's do like, I don't know, whatever, i times 5. And let's run that again. All right, so this is the object that it creates. And this is each item in that object multiplied by 5. So, you know, we can pass it fewer arguments. Doesn't matter. Like we can really pass as many as we want. So it kind of turns your uh, your variables here, your inputs, into an iterable object that you can then handle. So this is really great when you don't know how many uh, parameters someone's going to pass to a function. And this is a great example. Let's say someone wants to get a bunch of numbers multiplied by five. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if that's what you're trying to do, what we've done here, instead of having them uh, do one at a time and keep running in a loop or something, you can just pass in a bunch of these, uh, as many as you could think of, and it'll just iterate right through them. So that's the gist of that. It literally can pass it whatever you want, and it's going to put it into an object that you can then iterate over and do something to. So yeah, that's, it's that simple. So uh, the next one are keyword arguments. And it's essentially the same as arguments, except instead of putting them in like a list, it'll put them in a dictionary. And so if you'd rather have um, like key value pairs passed in, uh, which can be helpful sometimes, this is the way you would do it. So let's do one called fruits. And then we'll pass it keyword arguments this time. And we'll do our uh, good old for key value in quargs.items. And if you're not familiar with this, this is saying for each item in the list, or excuse me, each item in the dictionary, uh, give me the key and the value. So then we can, it's like how you'd iterate over a standard dictionary. And we just print key value. So the way you pass in stuff to this is you just call the function and you give it some like dictionary values. So basically like a key value pair. And we'll just do the uh, apples red, banana is uh, 
yellow and pair say it's green and run this oh don't do that let's see fruit is not defined of course it's not there we go fruits plural multiple there you go so we've got our uh, hopefully you can see that just fine we've got our our key value pairs iterated through just like you would go through a standard dictionary and if we print this we'll actually print it this time you can see that it is in fact a dictionary so it constructs it into a dictionary whatever key value pairs you pass uh, your keyword arguments it will put them in a dictionary so this is super helpful and sometimes people will pass uh, both so you can pass a bunch of numbers and then you could pass some of your like key value pairs as well and it can it's smart enough to like separate them uh, anything that's just a single entry would go under args and anything that's something equals something would go as a keyword argument so that's why you see them a lot of times in both because it, it, it prevents uh, your function from breaking if it gets too many or too few arguments you can handle that inside the function itself so I want to show you one more example of how this would actually work in real life so let's say we have an API that we're calling and it accepts uh, a bunch of different parameters like optional parameters like uh, start date end date uh, max results whatever it is and you can pass as many or as few of those to the API call as you want to, but uh, you don't know uh, when the user calls your function, uh, you don't know how many of those they're gonna wanna specify. So that the parameters passed to the function could be maybe one or two or maybe 10, uh, and you wanna be able to handle all instances of that. So let's define a function called fetch data, and this is our uh, API function that will connect out to some like Twitter API or something and pull a bunch of tweets down or whatever it is that you're working on. So you're going to pass it keyword arguments. And if you know, again, if you've watched any of my videos, we do a lot of like API calls and we're just going to make up a URL. We're not actually going to execute this. Uh, just create like a fake URL and the way uh, request works is you do r equals request dot get and URL and then you can uh, pass it in uh, parameters so we're gonna equal quarks here and so generally what a lot of people do if they're new they'll just do r equals request dot get and then they'll just type in the whole URL like like, like say api.twitter, let's say that's what it is. And then um, like get or like search. And then you have the question mark and you say like your token uh, is like some like random API token and uh, name equals uh, John and uh, start date equals some ridiculous thing like right and, and it goes on and on and on and what ends up happening is that you have this like really long line of code which will extend way past the limit and if it's a very uh, complex API call with a lot of parameters this URLs get they just get so nasty and then it's impossible really to change any of these parameters so even though this is a very simple way, if you just like, let's say you're working with the API and you have in your uh, web browser, in the address bar, you actually have the full link. You could copy and paste that in and, and request the JSON back from it, but it's kind of an ugly method to do that. So again, the, the preferred approach is to have the actual base URL and I'd probably have like a, like a slash on it and then pass in your parameters as a uh, dictionary and what will happen is requests which you'd have to import request here right for this to work 
the request will take this dictionary and it will add it on to the end of your URL with the like question mark and the ampersand to like link all the, the values together. So it constructs the URL dynamically for you based on what you pass to it. So therefore, it is really helpful to have this keyword arguments because what I can do is I could say like fetch data and I could say like, let's say there's a user ID that you might want to pass and that's uh, something like that. And let's say that you want to pass it a start date and you do something like that and there's an end date and that's whatever you want. And let's say there's like a zip code, okay. So you, let's say you want to pass all these, uh, what are you doing here? Oh, there we go. Let's say you want to pass all these values in. Well, like we saw up here in the fruits example, we know since we're using keyword arguments that it's going to take these and bunch them into a dictionary which is exactly how parameters are passed to the request.get. So by using keyword arguments in our function, we can actually accept as many uh, arguments, as many parameters as we want to our API call uh, so that this function is like universally uh, applicable no matter whether you have one or 20 arguments or parameters, it doesn't matter. So this will uh, handle a lot of use cases for API calls. And it's one that if you are, if you're, if you're watching the videos that we do, we talk about APIs. Um, it, you won't use this if it's a fixed uh, amount of parameters. Like let's say there's three arguments that are required to get the API to work. You just require the person to put in all three of those. So you would specify the three different variables here because you don't want them calling the function without the, the requisite uh, uh, parameters passed in. But if it's something that's completely open, you can just use this. And you could also say like, let's say it always requires a token and it always requires a user ID and then the rest is optional. Well, you can go like this. You can say, uh, let's say you you define token up here. Let's say it's whatever. That's your API key, right? And you could just say uh, token, and you could say uh, your user ID is whatever it is. Okay, so now it, the first two items here are going to go to token and to user ID, and then the rest are going to go in as keyword arguments, which will become a dictionary, which will pass to the parameters of the uh, request.get. So that's it really for the video. Um, these are also useful in subclassing and uh, decorators, which is outside the scope of this video, but uh, there's a lot of use cases for this. So now that you understand how they work, just remember these get passed in uh, like kind of like a list object and these get passed in as dictionaries. Uh, so that's it. So hopefully that clears that up for you. You're not afraid to uh, read code that's got that in there and know exactly what's going on. And hopefully you'll find ways to implement this in to make your uh, functions a little more resilient going forward. Thanks. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Please subscribe. Appreciate it.